this is the very first of hopefully many <laughs> different podcasts we're going to be doing with interesting guests all the time, just to kind of give you a more of an insight into what goes on here. And so, to start off with, we have the person who's been with it since the beginning, since Stonebridge opened back in 2002, and just this year, has recently taken full ownership of the company, Arthur Rocha. Thank you very much for entertaining my dumb ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Not dumb at all. I think it's great to yeah, know, build yeah. more content and and tell people the story behind uh, behind all this. Well, I figured, especially too, it's, a, it's something you get asked all the time whenever people come in, just like, like, well, what's the deal with this? How long has it been here? And so kind of give you a chance to just kind of expand on the story, you know, kind of just tell people all the time you're talking with me about, you know, this happened X amount of years ago, this happened at this time. And so let's all share those stories with, uh, with the rest of the world, right? Yeah, for sure. Where do you want to start? Well, let's, let's just start at the beginning, right? <laughs> I remember talking with like Malu and Ariel. They always talk about like they grew up around crystals. They go to the basement and their dad was playing with rocks or they'd be learning all these facts about these salt lamps as they're offloading them into the garage. So I wanted to wonder like, how does that, how do you think that changed your childhood, right? Did, did it, were you a product of your environment when it came to the love of stones or did you grow attached to it because you genuinely liked them? I guess it's a bad yeah. way to word that. <laughs> Both things are correct. Yeah, definitely, um, you know, see my dad as a hero. An immigrant came here with, you know, pretty much nothing. And, and he built this, this business from scratch. And I wanted to take that legacy to the next level. Uh, basically, that's what I'm here for. So when you say it's like built it from scratch, uh, I remember you mentioned before that it's like your this business started off in the back of a van and you're going to different shows and stuff like that. It's like, do do you have much recollection of that? Or is that more so like you weren't involved in that sort of stuff yet. Like who set up the logistics for that? Who yeah. Who go, let's go to the Can Gift Show in Toronto. <laughs> for sure, that was mostly my dad. He started the business, him and, and his wife. Um, and I, I always helped out a little bit whenever I could. I went to many of the shows together <laughs> and basically we had a minivan. Actually before a minivan, like just a car and we just load up a bunch of crystals on the side. And what, kind of, what kind of car was it? Uh, it's an old Buick. <laughs> It's like a big boat looking car <laughs> it was amazing um and uh yeah so we would just go up and found all the local kind of shows gift shows and rock and gem shows in the area and we would just buy a little table and 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 sit there for the weekend and, and the business kind of kind of started that way uh, the the big uh gift expo that was in Toronto, that was like an actually a big jump in the business um it was 2002 or 2003, and uh, and that's like a much bigger investment because it's like quite mm -hmm. more expensive at the time. And but it really uh, gave us a big boost into the soapstone business, and we found some really good uh, business that way. So would you say like 2002? Because as far as I understand, Stonebridge Imports was founded in 2002. So yeah. it was kind of like the okay, we've established a brand now. We're going to these bigger shows. Let's turn this from just an immigrant new to Canada, selling rocks out of the back of a Buick <laughs> into like this big giant thing, right? Yeah. So from there, uh, it was first out of um, my old partner's uh, garage, Steve, and he started that and we, you know, went to a few shows that way. And then after a little while, we rented a tiny little basement warehouse in Kitchener. <laughs> And then the next step was we rented a house with a store um, and they were there for many, many years. So the store front was the main floor of the house. We live upstairs. Where, and then where the, is this house at? And Bridgeport. Bridgeport. Bridgeport also and like, Regina yeah, and uptown Waterloo. Down the street, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and then after that, a few years there, we opened our first warehouse. It was on Lancaster Street. That was a big expansion of the business. And then we got to the current location uh, in 2011. 2011, so yeah. So it's been here for, yeah, 11 years now at this point? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking, do you mind me asking, 2002, I was four years old at that point. How old I were you are when you 15. were? 15. 15. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot more guts than I did when I was 15. I was like, I mean, I was still super shy and like, to, to be going to shows and be surrounded by people and to try and make a sale as a 15 year old, would be like, well, I'll tell you, I was really awkward. I didn't really enjoy it that much out there. I was just like, oh, I don't know what's going on. You know, I, I just kind of did got it. Got dragged along. Got dragged along. <laughs> I guess, and, yeah, true enough. And I enjoyed some of it. I enjoyed the traveling part, but I didn't really enjoy 
being behind there and moving all the shelves and heavy rocks when I was a kid, you know, I just, I just did it, right? Mm, um, and, and I learned to enjoy it. And I, <laughs> and I saw how much my dad and my family worked hard, and so I, I did it out of love. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you miss traveling nowadays? Um, I don't miss traveling. I do quite a bit of traveling too. Oh, um, true, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, I don't go to sell the shows. I go buy a network and, and, mm -hmm. and do different things as well. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess, I mean, that definitely checks out, especially to, you know, recent, like, yeah, later this week, you're going down to Brazil. Kind yeah. Of, uh, to, to see him again. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to visit my dad there in Brazil and uh, and see some suppliers, uh, meet some, some new ones, and uh, maybe find some cool new things to bring back. Do you reminisce on the old days a lot? No. Like I say, in my <laughs> mind's eye, do you, do you sit down with your dad with a beer in the hand, go, man, remember that one crazy time this happened at that one show? You got any stories like that? Do you got any like, th like something wild that just happened while you're out on the road or at a show or something like that? Oh, so many crazy things happen. Definitely uh, crashed in the gas station once. <laughs> there was definitely a time we went to Montreal and it was a big whiteout and it took oh like 20 hours to get there. Where, where was that? Um, I remember hearing about this. I don't rem remember the year. <laughs> they all blend together, but to some shows we got kicked out of, you know, that's always fun. Okay, wait. How did you get kicked out of a show? I gotta ask. Was it, was it like all you guys kicked out of a show, or is like one of you little rascals did something that caused you guys to get kicked out? I don't remember the whole situation, but um, we definitely ruffled a bunch of feathers, and I, I, I was a lot more cautious, so I take myself out of that cause. <laughs> we'll chalk it up to one of the other twos who shall not be mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> they shall not be named. Yeah, so going back to 2011, you guys got this place, and it was right around that time that you had the idea for the Rock Spa, right? And so does that have an interesting origin story, or is it kind of just you woke up from a deep sleep and went, <gasps> a spa and crystals? <laughs> no, it was uh, it was definitely a, a booing thing. My dad started the business. He started everything. It's mostly his ideas mm -hmm. from the beginning. Um, and basically the rock spa started because he had uh, sleep apnea. So that's an interesting story. And uh, the government, um, he went for one of those sleep clinics mm -hmm. and the sleep clinics kind of pretty much ratted him out to the, um, the Ontario government, part, I guess the um, MTO, Ministry of Transportation. Because if you have sleep apnea, then you gotta get properly tested, otherwise they can re revoke your license. So he was literally, Days that. away from revoking his license. Uh, otherwise, he had to get like one of those CPAP machines, things like that. So he mm -hmm. went uh, and did some ton of the research and found that salt therapy really, really helped. So he built the salt room, which is the main thing he built, for him. He built it. He built it so he can help himself uh, and the community. <laughs> That's interesting. So yeah, that whole salt room, which you're going to be seeing a picture of it right now, uh, that did he build it all with his own two hands or did you have like people? No, we, we hired a crew. Yeah, yeah, we hired a crew and, and we had some, some new friends out of the, out of the deal too. And, we, <laughs> and it was really cool at the time. Yeah, it's very interesting. And place. then that kind of just eventually turned into the rest of the spot. Like you had the salt room <laughs> and then you're just kind of like, okay, what other like therapies and stuff like that can you give back to the community? So yeah. it was kind of like... <laughs> For, he was like the, the guinea pig. He's like he would test all this stuff out and be like, "This works for me. Let's get it for the store." Pretty much, right? Yeah, basically, you know, a lot of business come out of necessity, right? You know, solving your own problems. That's the clear sure case of that. Of I mean, that. yeah. Just, if it works for you, it definitely is going to work for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely help a lot of people uh, in that regards. I remember meeting many, many clients throughout the years that uh, came here every week, and they like, if I don't come to the salt room, I won't sleep. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was, it, was, hey, it worked for your dad's sleep apnea. Did, how often did you go into the salt room? Quite a bit, quite a bit. Yeah, I actually, I loved in there. It was very quiet and like, I just sit there and do some meditation or just have a little nap in the middle of the day. And, so, yeah, I feel yeah. like a lot of that stuff would just be so easy to just relax and fall asleep in it. Yeah. Lose track of time. For sure. It was really cool. It was interesting, uh, interesting business, but, uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately it, it, it passed away due to COVID. Do you miss it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I don't really remember in, in the past too much. I'm, I'm much more of a forward looking guy. Fair enough. Uh, so my things are talking about the future and what's what's new and exciting. Yeah, especially too. I've, I mean, 
I don't know how much detail we should go into, but I remember hearing the horror stories from from the spa. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely a challenging business. They were definitely like the, the main, maintenance of it is pretty demanding. Mm -hmm. um, and we changed a lot over the years of the Rock Spa. Um, there were services, there were practitioners, massage therapy, reflexology. And then we stopped with all of that and went with different services like the flotation tank and the crystal bed and all this, you know, different things. And um, yeah. But, I remember, yeah, it's a lot of people talking about how much they love the, like, the flotation tank and stuff like that. And, well, I'm glad at least everyone got to experience it. Yeah, it was good while it lasted. But, you know, things change. Things change. <laughs> and, yeah, speaking of things changing, it, like, do you, like, how do you, do you find things have changed since, or pre-pandemic versus after pandemic? Do you have anything that really, really sticks out in your mind of the before times versus the after times? Oh man, there's so many things. Um, I think people in general are more towards the natural and, and the actual alternative therapies to help with your health. Uh, that'd be maybe meditation or yoga or using crystals or different things that help. Um, and I think that a lot of more awareness happening this past throughout COVID uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and continue on. So yeah, that's, th I, that's where I see the business going that way. I, that's why I definitely see now that we've, you know, been a lot more lax on the pandemic and everything like that, that kind of just doing some reflection on it, that so many people got the chance to, you know, do some self-reflection, try more natural things, take up meditation and yoga, which were kind of a necessity for people coping with all this crazy stuff going on. And then uh, come out of it, people are kind of just like, well, I want to keep doing this stuff. Like it's, it helps. Like mm -hmm. I don't want, like I'm not going to, it's not like a, some activity where it's like, okay, now that we have, we're able to go outside again. We're just going to like give it up. It's like, no, people like this stuff. And they've had that kind of excuse and a chance to give it a try and then realize they like it and can get you through with it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think that's uh, that we're a good spot in the business to help those people open well, up and having, uh, well, yeah, especially too, enjoy it's that, like enjoy more of that. Uh, not a lot of that type of place in Kitchener, at least like, yeah, I've lived here most of my life. I've I've never seen any place besides the Stonebridge and now the Rock Space that kind of like has that sort of niche. Like, you know, we had Green Earth and stuff like that where I'd get all my incense and all my sage. That closed down. It doesn't no longer exists, unfortunately. And so it's like, it's nice that at least there's somewhere where it's like for everything that I need for that, like, you know, meditation, that sort of thing. Right here. Exactly. <laughs> right yeah. Here. And I think that uh, retail in general and having a store is a service to the community. Yeah, you can buy anything you want online, right? I mean, everybody had to through, through all the COVID <laughs> times, but it, it, it's a very different experience when you come in and you see it in person, you touch it and you feel it and you have different selections and you interact with the people there. And, and uh, I think it's really important for the community to have a place to, to well, do that. Especially too, it's very important to interact with stuff besides through a screen. And it's like we've all had our fill of navigating online spaces now and so it's back to using our legs <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and so i guess that that's also a big question is that like you've been around stonebridge since the very beginning since so even before 2002 it was still around before that what's N like no no sorry to correct you um 2002 that's when we my whole family moved to oh gotcha, and then gotcha. we started it um the business actually found in october 2002 so I think most things kind of started like around that okay, so fall, yeah, winter. On the same um, year. Yeah, and I, I really um, worked kind of part time and helped my dad whenever I can on weekends, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then um, and You're then I went to school. school stuff I was like in still school, <laughs> yeah. and then after I finished my my university, I came full time. That's when we moved into this building, in like 2010, 2011. Gotcha, gotcha. So that kind of just all came together at that point. Yeah. So in the past ten years, then let me ask you this: What do you think is the biggest change you think you've seen in all of this like stonebridge the man there's so many changes like <laughs> um is there, is there the, one the, they the, think that's like this is monumental you know no stonebridge is the kind of the values that we that we that we use uh is innovation and constant improvement mm -hmm. So I think that every year and every month we improve. And uh, over the course of, you know, say a year, we improve a little bit every, every day, then that's a huge compound interest of improvements. So 
there's never like a major thing that happens. Uh, I think just constantly improvement is, is the name of the game for us. And you see that. And if you take some pictures today, you just like, look very different yeah, in a like, few months. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, like even to compare it to like last, you know, couple, like two weeks ago, all of a sudden like that didn't exist. That is brand new. All of a sudden that's, that's gone. It's been replaced by something else. It's like every two weeks there's something that's been changed and, you know, it feels a lot nicer because of it. Yeah. You know, feng Shui, it just feels good when you move stuff around. Right. Exactly, yeah. And I took that uh, to my life as well. It's just always improving. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and oh, from my understanding, you're also very much, you know, you like to keep active. You go rock climbing a lot in your spare time. And you also, was it recently that you started taking up rock counting? Or was that kind of always just like a passive interest? You know, kids just always love rocks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> for most kids, just picking up rocks on the side of the road, you know. And, uh, and but recently, uh, yeah, I took more, a little bit more interest in actually go into some mines and start digging on our own and, and see what, you know, some of the things come from and it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So when I, actually through my my rock climbing trips, I go up in the bush or go in the mountain and I always bring some rocks back. <laughs> so my backpack goes in just, full just of water. Right at the very top back. You go, Yoink. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I don't even know where to walk me through that. What happened? Well, you just go, I'm going to go out over there with a pickaxe in my hand and just into the ground. Like, what's your <laughs> thought process for that? Well, you know, it depends where it is. The ground shouldn't really be digging someone's yard. So <laughs> <laughs> only go to the place they're allowed to go. <laughs> Fair but, uh, you know, Canada is a really big and beautiful place with lots of nature. Uh, yeah. And there is definitely a lot of opportunity to go out there and, and find your own mm -hmm. crystals and rocks for sure. Right on, right on. And so, you know, recently, especially too, you just went out to Arizona, this big, huge trade show. Is there any interesting stories from that you ever wanted to talk about? Any, oh, any interesting yeah. characters you met? So many. I love that place. Like, <laughs> it is the mecca of all crystals. It's, it's Tucson, Arizona. And every time I go, it's like the energy is just insane. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been going from every year for a few years. And it's just every time is, is unique and different and beautiful. Um, I can't think of any crazy stories that happen, but there's always the biggest and most obscene amount of crystals that are like huge. Like you look at this thing and it's like, what? That came out of the ground? Like it doesn't even exist. It's it's always so Blows insane my mind. to see a geo that could fit a full sized adult into it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I remember we talked about earlier about making like a a literal crystal bed where you just have like you just cocoon yourself into a giant amethyst geode or something like. Are oh, those trees? Yeah. Those trees are insane. Yeah, so people always make cool and good things out of it. And and with the crystals is that, um, you know, we really taken this out of the ground. So it's nature's art in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything has its unique place where it already come from around the world. Um, and every time we do something, you never know what's going to be next, right? So <laughs> sometimes it affects what you can get. Some, some years it more of this, some years more of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but every single one is unique and beautiful. Well, actually, yeah, speaking like that's it's, it's stuff that's happening all over the world. We get all of our supply from all over the world, so it's really like dependent on that aspect of like what happens when, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've been to Arizona, you've been to Brazil. Where, what's the place you've always wanted to go to next? Oh man, uh, I haven't been to Asia. I love to go to Asia. There's so much out that'd there, be, too. That'd be really Very cool. different. Uh, Indonesia, I think really cool stuff come out of there as well. Or <laughs> even India. There's beautiful, beautiful places in India uh, to visit. Yeah, I love to go there. That'd Thailand. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, you already done the rock climbing. Just do the backpacking through Southeast Asia instead. You know, I love traveling. So the rock hounding, business traveling. And rock climbing, they're all going to hand. So if, some, if I can hit all three of them <laughs> yeah. in a trip, I, I do. <laughs> you got all your hobbies and your business all just kind of work all together. Yeah. Just love rocks. Yeah. Just love rocks. Just, I mean, hey, it works, right? 100%. It works. But the, the funny thing is, though, is my last name, Hosha, you say in Portuguese, literally means rock. So it, it is my <laughs> destiny. I'm not going away. <laughs> You're fated to, to be one with stones. <laughs> yeah. True story. And actually, yeah, it's, I guess just to cap this off here, Mr. Stone, Mr. Stone Man, it's literally in your name. What do you see for the, the future of you know, minerals, stones, crystals, 
geology, all that stuff in general. Do you have any wisdom, any insights from your more than half your life spent in this field? What do, what do you got to, to say about this whole crazy world that we're a part of? Yeah, man, I don't know that much, and I'm constantly <laughs> learning every day. I don't want to say I'm wise <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but um, yeah, I, I think just more awareness uh, and and I think the 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 gem collecting and crystals has been around for century, millennia. People just have talisman, and people keep digging out different archaeological sites and finding you know different crystals and stones in there. So I don't think this will go away ever. Plenty of earth uh, to go through. There's plenty of earth. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't go through all the earth. Uh, but the scale that we, you know, the industry is pretty, pretty small compared to like things that they mine for manufacturing or cars or batteries and stuff. It's, it's like insignificant in that way. So, mm -hmm. but as long as that uh, we do it in a very spectral manner, I think we should keep going with it uh, and, and providing this, this value. For sure, yeah. for sure. And I guess just to end it all off, is there... Is there anything you've always wanted to say to the whole wide world? <laughs> anything directly to our to our audience? Thank you. Thank you for being part of this world. I love all of you. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect.